We're in the 18th book of Israel, tested and proven. This evening's lesson begins on page 117, chapter 12. The house of Yahweh only has salvation. Here's the proof. And this was given in the Feast of Unleavened Bread on the month of Yahweh 19, which is the Roman uh, year and month 4618. Shalom, everyone. Praise Yahweh, Pastor says. The peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. He continues saying, I like what we're seeing in the news. And what he means by that is he sees in the news the fulfillment of the prophecies that Yahweh spoke of in the Holy Scriptures that we would be watching for and that we would see in this time period called the last days or the last generation. The peaceful scene, which is a little scene set up here at the house of Yahweh, which has a, an old house, just a, a, a regular a wooden house with an outhouse and a garden and a pen for animals, no running water, no electricity, just the basics. The way mankind lived for 5,900 years. I'm not sure everyone is getting what I want them to get from that peaceful scene. Now listen to me. Mankind lived without automobiles, televisions, telephones, all of these things for 5,900 years. Yes, all of these things came to us to show what, an in, what increase in knowledge is. Now, I want to do a little demonstration with this increase in knowledge. I don't know. Do we have the overhead? We do. Okay, I'm going to quickly, for the youngsters, explain, the, the young men, explain what I'm doing here. You're all familiar with an inch, so we're going to start at zero and go to one inch, okay? Now, if I divide that in half, we have one half inch here and one half here. Now, if I continue to divide that, now it's divided into how many parts? One, two, three, four. Okay? And if I divide each of those in half? Correct. Somebody said eighths. So we have eight parts. And if I divide each of those in half, we will have 16 equal parts. So what I'm going to do in the demonstration is I'm going to use a tape measure, and we're going to say for this demonstration that... Each part is equal to one year, okay? So if you're 16 years old, that's how long you've lived on that ruler of time, okay? That measure of time. So my assistant is going to take this tape measure and start reeling out the years and go that way, and he's going to go 31 feet. Slow down a little bit. Read my measure. Eight. There we are. Okay. Now, here's about 30 feet. Okay. A little over 30. We're actually right out closer to 31. There we go. In the span of mankind's life on earth, man's history, this, in all that span of time, represents 1934 to 2019, the period of the last days. And it was in this time period and it started back here a little bit, so I'd say the last 200 years, we started to see the increase of uh, mechanical technology, and then the computer started being developed, and in, that's how much space of time that the common man has had access to all the luxuries of life that we enjoy today. Transportation, electricity, and, you know, rapid travel, and so forth. So 
bear this in mind as we continue here that, you know, in each generation we feel like we have to have every toy and gadget that uh, the television promotes and that our neighbors have. That's not the way it's always been. Yahweh is going to give each one of you an ability, the subconscious mind. And we know from the evidence presented to us in this time period that the subconscious mind has an incredible ability to record every experience, everything you observe, every emotion you experience, every uh, interaction you experience. It also has the ability to convey uh, the ability in languages, the ability in skills and talents. We've seen examples in history where people have had brain injuries and the brain got uh, rewired, you might say forcibly rewired, and all of a sudden their personality changed. They took on uh, another language that they were not formally familiar with. They started uh, playing a musical instrument with a high level of skill. They developed, uh, some people just are born with the ability to remember things, to have such things as photographic memories. Well, these are all amazing capabilities that we know exist. We just, most of us don't have uh, access to that at will. It's something that either has to be uh, allowed by Yahweh at this time or granted because Yahweh has created this ability and has control over these things. Now, the thing about the subconscious mind is that it needs a moral director because it doesn't choose righteousness on its own. It's a great repository of skill and knowledge, but knowledge without understanding and moral guidance can do much harm. And so this is why we have this time period of being tested and proven to show that with our conscious will, we will choose righteousness. And whatever ability Yahweh allows, allows us, we will use that to serve others to support his work, which reaches and teaches others, and to, to do righteously as Yahweh does. Yahweh kept the amount of knowledge given to Adam and Eve in man's history up until he had lived almost 6,000 years. This knowledge only came to us in these last hundred years, and it came to us to prove to heaven and earth what the world's way would bring if knowledge was increased to it. And so this is what we see in the news, you know, fulfillment of that prophecy or fulfillment of that plan, that it's going exactly as Yahweh said it would. And because of that, we have assurance that the solution to all these problems that Yahweh has is also true and factual and will come to pass. Yahweh's original sons had knowledge, which we call the Malachim, and uh, they're sometimes referred to as demons, and the created beings that uh, live in, he in the heavens uh, that are not visible to us ordinarily. And we saw this ability given to Yahshua when uh, he could pass through solid, uh, a solid wall, could travel great distances and short periods of time, as he explained to his disciples. Uh, he could even, um, well, he, he had that ability, so we know that exists. Yahweh shows that all of these are above us in their knowledge right now, but remember what's lacking? Is, is that character, that a righteous character, to direct that knowledge in a, in a proper direction. <clears throat> in their accumulation of knowledge and being able to use it, uh, the first phases of the earth, Satan and her gods, her sons who became gods, 
Satan and her sons had the knowledge to create and maintain flesh, and they became uh, the adversaries of Yahweh because he wanted to bring righteousness, which interfered with their desire to become as Yahweh, to have, uh, in other words, they wanted to put their hand in the cookie jar and to take all the uh, freedoms to themselves. And this is what we see in man's character today is that he wants everything to himself as much as he can get. So Satan and her and the other created beings did not agree with uh, that plan, the plan of Yahweh, and they even created other beings to try to interfere with the plan of Yahweh and the, cre and the creation of mankind. And we saw this, uh, which took place before the, on the earth before Adam and Eve were set in the garden to give uh, to tend it and care for it. So first off, Yahweh shows that if you leave your first estate, that is, this is where the conditions Yahweh's placed us under and given us to work with. If we go out from the house of Yahweh and go some other way and try to seek salvation some other way or uh, go out our own way thinking we can still have salvation, that's not the way it's set up in Yahweh's plan. And there isn't an alternate plan or a second plan or another plan. Yahweh's very fair in that respect. He gives, the, the, it's, it's one plan for all. Um, we have different parts that we play at different uh, periods of time. There's different uh, eras of Yahweh's work. There's different uh, events that take place. Uh, this time period now, under the last day's witness, has uh, some unique characteristics that are different from the previous works so that we can fulfill the prophecies given to us. If you leave your first estate, then you're going to be uh, minus, so that you're going to be without what Yahweh is providing you. You're going to be without any further growth that you would have gotten if you had stayed in the house of Yahweh, because this is the place to be tested and proven, to be tried. And if we go out some other way on our own, thinking we can go on our own without being accountable to Yahweh, then we're lifting ourselves up like the gods and we're saying to Yahweh, we can choose for ourselves, uh, we can know righteousness and evil, uh, we can hang out here in the world or whatever and still have salvation and that's just not the case. The reason we put up that display is I wanted you to see and live a little of what I lived in my early days as a child. And even some of the most common mundane experiences of daily life were uh, quite an event. You know, uh, like me just getting here tonight. Uh, you know, jumping in the shower at the last minute, you get your ablution, you jump in the car, you zip on over. Uh, it wasn't that easy before. You had to plan hours in advance to be able to do something as simple as attend a, a lesson here tonight. Nowadays, you know, we have automatic gates and telephones to stay in touch and automobiles to drive. And Pastor has used these things all that has come to pass over the last hundred years or so, or a little more. And many of these things that we're familiar with, for example, the electric gate, we, we might think that's a recent invention, or the automobile or the airplane, but some of these things have existed for a very long time, and even, you know, a couple of hundred years. But it took a period of development to get those things into the hands of the common household, the common man. The first electric gate 
was invented in 1881 in Canada and 1887 in the USA. The phone uh, was presented to the public in 1876. The automobile was first promoted and sold in 1886 and 88. Uh, some of these things existed in various forms before then. The television was demonstrated to the public in 1925. The magnetic tape, which is what we used in the early part of the work of getting the sermons out, was developed in the 1930s. So technology was developing, and it took some time over that period of time, and finally was made affordable to the public. And I would say in this age with the computer, making everything so cheap really uh, didn't take place until about the 1980s and the late 70s. So uh, I didn't get my first computer uh, till in the 90s, I think. But, you know, it, it, uh, they were very expensive back then. The pastor had spoke about that in one of his lessons. But, you know, it was achievable. I would say by 1981 uh, or 80, yeah, 82, my friends started showing up with, you know, uh, little pocket computers and home computers. And the first thing we wanted to do with them was play games. And the object was the game of the game was to play as much as you could to get better than the other guy, to get better than your friend or a higher score. See, that competitive nature to try to get everything for yourself. But Pastor wasn't that. All he was interested in is how can this help us do the work? And I think one of the first things they did was uh, keep track of... Uh, the many addresses on the mailing list. It's just my memory, but uh, they used whatever Yahweh allowed us to have in this time period. Pastor looks for a way to use it in his work. He used everything Yahweh gave him, including people that were sent, that were called out and sent to him, that Yahweh opened their mind and through various means, they found their way to the house of Yahweh and Yahweh and pastor put them to work in preaching the message, the commission of the house of Yahweh in the last days. The push of the house of Yahweh is to get this knowledge out to the people. And we do that through the broadcasting and uh, uh, self-publishing, which is something that has not really come uh, into use until this very last part uh, from the 19, uh, about the 1950s, uh, to the present, and and now it's basically free. Uh, very, if, pretty much, you can find a, a free way to get the message anywhere in the world. Uh, pretty much. The difference in Satan's world is what they've done with this knowledge. The four thousand one hundred ninety nine religions have taken the same knowledge that was given to us by prophesy, prophecy, prophesied thousands of years before it came, and they took this knowledge that Yahweh's prophet Daniel said we would have, and what did they do with it? Well, we see it in the news. You know, ships at sea with missiles and bombs and planes trying to seize lands and seas and strategic advantage over their neighbors, developing... Uh, this technology competing and refining it to the point where they can rule over their neighbors by force, their fellow man by force. But what Pastor wants us to recognize and to see is the way that, that he lived, the way he was familiar with living, and it can be fairly simple, but... You know, even the things that are simple and mundane to us today were a little bit more involved for him. But it, it could be done, and it had been done for a very long time, and even more simply than what Pastor lived it as. But Yahweh has something to show us in First Timothy 6. In verse 6, he says, But holiness with contentment is great gain. Of course, the message there is to be content in what Yahweh has allowed us to have for the right purposes, 
For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. This is the physical, um, the physical things. Uh, in 1 Timothy 6, uh, 9, it says, But those who want to become rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful lusts. Now, uh, this doesn't mean that, like, in verse 17, it, it shows you that there are rich uh, in possessions. Command those who are rich in this world that they not be haughty nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living Father who gives us richly all things to enjoy. So riches are a blessing from Yahweh to be used for right purposes. It's not wrong to be wealthy, to, to be rich, or to have possessions, but to... To desire to be rich is to desire this accumulation of things over the things that you are to store up within you, the righteousness, the righteous character, the, the things that will count as your righteousness if you should go to sleep in this time. When you're resurrected, those things will, that were, are counted to you as righteousness, that's what you want to pay attention to the things that, that are lasting. As the scripture says, the store up things in heaven where moth and dust does not corrupt. So mankind, though, he's got his mind on everything he can get to enjoy in this life. And they'll even set up um, uh, false deceptions to be able to... to trick people and to squander money out of people and to cheat people out of uh, increase and try to take all they can get for themselves. And they'll either tr even try to draw you into their churches, you know, and they'll come to you and say, do you know the Lord, the Lord brother, brethren? And what they want to say is, that, look, you can come with us and join with us and have all these riches and this wealth and this abundance in this life. Your life can be so great, you know, uh, the Savior wants you to have all these things. But they're liars because they don't believe the Scriptures. As it says in, in Yachanon 3 verse 4, where it tells us that sin is the breaking of Yahweh's laws. They do not keep the Sabbath. They don't teach the Sabbath. Even if they meet on the seventh day Sabbath, they don't keep the name of Yahweh. They've all turned to the worship of gods and uh, Lord, which we can see from uh, our research that, you know, it means uh, uh, Baal, and Baal means Lord, Lord means rabbi, so essentially they're worshiping dead rabbis. Somewhere here, the pastor said, you know, it's, it's simple. You can look this up. We can try that. Let's see if that works. I didn't get that. Etymology of John. Etymology of John. Here's what I found. Meaning, origin, and history of the name John. BehindTheName.com, and let's see if you can see that. Let's see if we got that on the overhead. There it is, and it says. I thought that was funny in the Hebrew. That I didn't never saw that before. They actually put an created a little eye there. In your studies, when you come to the house of Yahweh, you'll learn that's from the vowel points. So they pronounce it uh, Yochan in there, but then they tell you it means Yahweh is, and that word they use gracious, but it means merciful. Yahweh is merciful. So that was pretty simple. We just proved out the name uh, 
the true name of the prophet Yachanan was a long ways from John, and his heavenly father, father's name is in his name, which is Yahweh. Yeah, pretty simple. Exodus 20 shows us the Ten Commandments. It shows us those uh, general guidelines of Yahweh's laws, and it shows you that Yahweh is going to test you in Exodus 20, verse 20, to see if you're faithful to keep a feast, to keep a Sabbath, to keep uh, those uh, Sabbath appointments where you will learn how you are to conduct yourself with your, yourself and with your neighbor, and to see if you will carry that out. He who commits sin does not belong to Yahweh and is of the devil. Surely that's plain enough. And it says it in every Bible, in every translation. He who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. That's what she taught Eve, to do what was sin. For this purpose... The Son of Yahweh was manifest, that is, made known or revealed to mankind, that he might destroy the works of the devil. As pastors pointed out to us, that, you know, whoever this man was, whoever you think he was, it's undeniable that this individual, who the world falsely calls Jesus, who the uh, the authorities, uh, the authoritative booklets, the Hebrew language, and everything shows and proves that his name is Yahshua, meaning Yahweh is salvation, which is perfectly fitting. It's very plain to see that that man had a powerfully enormous, uh, just a... Uh, he, he changed the course of history. He had a tremendous impact on society, and which continues to this day. And of all the books ever written, this book called the Holy Scriptures, you know, printed in many forms, only the Book of Yahweh being now being restored to its proper original form, uh, which is a work in progress all the time as we hear every Sabbath, This book remains with us. This document remains with us through all history, uh, even until now. So you've got two very significant events surrounding this individual, the Holy Scriptures from which he taught from. And so here we see this character, this person, which Yahweh brought forth in his time, which is incidentally connected to the last day's work, For this purpose, the Son of Yahweh was made known, and what we see here is Yahshua. And he is the example and the way in which we follow to succeed and to overcome as he overcame or prevailed over wickedness. So if you'll please stand at this point, we're going to pause. And I'm going to introduce our next teacher who's going to continue with your lesson in this awesome message here today. The great Khan Kananya. Praise Yahweh. Shalom, men. You may be seated. Or please be seated. <laughs> All right. Pick up where the great Khan Betzel left off. <clears throat> In case anyone's just joining us, we're in the 18th book of Israel, chapter 12. The house of Yahweh only has salvation. Here's the proof. And it's a Feast of Unleavened Bread, Yahweh 19, 4, 6, 18. Here's the proof. You remember, I don't know, some of you, <laughs> some of the older guys might remember the old lady. I don't remember what, maybe it was Wendy's commercial. And uh, she always used to ask, where's the beef? You know, you remember that lady? <laughs> you know, they try these different burgers from these other places and she'd open up the bread and go where's the beef all right because she was looking for some evidence of some semblance of meat and people are today looking for some semblance of of meat but spiritual food the 
the meat unto salvation, and they're actually asking and questioning their their pastors, their ministers, their preachers, their priests, you know, where's the truth? <laughs> where's the salvation? You know, what when and people actually start reading their books, their scriptures, they realize that their scriptures and the teachings of the organizations, they don't line up. You know, there's something amiss. And so naturally, people start to ask questions, and that's great. You know, we should, like R.T. says, question more. <clears throat> but that in regards to if it doesn't fit in, the, in line with the teachings that come from the Holy Scriptures. Now, of course, we can't lean on our own understanding and say, well, my understanding in this is X, Y, Z. No, the law tells you to ask, right? And even as Yahshua, who, as we're talking about the salvation here, the salvation of Yahweh, when he was just a, uh, as they would say, a mere lad, a young man, 12 years old, you know, think, think in your life. I could think back in my life, what I was doing when I was 12, and it was not really anything advantageous that I could remember. But think about what you were doing at that time period in your life. And compare that to Yahshua and his mindset and what he was actually searching for, right? And understand that just because we didn't have that that upbringing and that environment growing up in our lives at that time doesn't mean that we can't qualify for greatness in Yahweh's kingdom. Of course we can. That's why he brought us here, right? He didn't bring us here just to uh, have bodies to fill in, you know, a room so that it looks great on camera or anything like that. He brought us here to train us because he's building a family. He's putting together a kingdom of priests, as, as Exodus shows, a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, uh, we're even called a peculiar people uh, who would show forth the praises of Yahweh. And this showing forth the praises of Yahweh is done through our works and through our teachings, our actions, because the, the praises of Yahweh is made manifest not only through our words, but through our works as well. Okay, And so as the multitudes come here, this is what they're going to be searching for, not necessarily shopping for salvation, but they're, but they're searching for a source of life. Okay, they're searching for a source of light uh, because they've experienced, they've been in the darkness, they've been, as the scripture says, groping in the dark, uh, looking for light, uh, looking for a way out, right? And, and they're not able to find it. And so Yahweh gives that light in a, in a dark place. And Yahshua gave the example of, of the work of Yahweh being that light that Yahweh sets, you know, on a high place. Uh, he doesn't set it under a basket. If anything, he would set it on top of a basket so it may have greater height to give light to all those who are in that, in that room or in that um, environment, like a, kind of like a lighthouse does. I don't know if any of you have ever been near a coast, uh, a, a coastal um, uh, cities or anything like that. Uh, they have lighthouses and people paint nice, nice pretty pictures of them and everything. And, uh, but they're meant to, you know, let the ships know where the shore is. You know, so that in, in times of great fog and, and, and horrible storms, um, the ships can see that and not run, a, run aground or, or, or crash into something. Or, you know, if they're kind of looking for where to go, they'll know exactly where to go. And they're in a lighthouse, they always now today, you know, stuff's probably automated, I suspect. I don't know. I think there's still some human intervention in it. But but there was a lighthouse keeper and that person's sole job was to make sure that that light never went out, okay? It, that was his sole job. And, 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 and if there was a storm and the power went out, uh, they had to make sure the, the, the backup generator was running. Uh, you know, before they, uh, they had other sources, they had big candles and things like that before electricity came into existence. But their job was to make sure that that light never went out so that mariners could find their way home, okay? And so we have much the same thing in this sea of destruction that, that the world is living in right now. The house of Yahweh is in existence, and of course Yahweh and Yahshua, and of course Israel, our pastor, is making sure that that light never goes out. So as the multitudes of people uh, start looking, and they're looking right now, they'll be able to see their way to Yahweh's house and find salvation. Um, I just wanted to read a definition for, for you here, and this is just a simple definition. This is it's not even out of Strong's or anything, but this is what you get when you look at uh, online. This is from Merriam-Webster's 
uh, dictionary online, and it's uh, I looked up the word salvation here, and um, it says here one of the definitions of it is deliverance from the power and effects of sin, and that's one of the definitions that they actually give deliverance from the power and effects of sin. And of course, I mean, many scriptures can come to mind and, and regarding the power uh, that, you know, there is a power that comes from Satan, the adversary, and, and her sons and those who follow her. Uh, and uh, even one of the prophets says there's a power surrounding the land and it's bringing your strength down. There's a power surrounding the land and there's a power that comes from both of the trees. There's a tree, the tree of righteousness and the tree of the mixture of righteousness and evil. And so the only way you can be delivered from that power, you have to keep in mind Romans uh, 6.16, you know, uh, whom you yield yourselves as servants to obey, right? As servants you are, um, whom you obey, whether of sin which leads to death or obedience which leads to righteousness. But the world, you know, they, they don't have the power, as we know, knowledge is power. That's a part of what pastor's talking about here and, and the, the knowledge that Yahweh wants to give us to choose righteousness and to, and to receive this authority to, to govern the universe, um, uh, we have to be taught it, right? And that's why education is so, so big, you know, it's so important with Yahweh. Uh, Yahweh has never ceased in educating and teaching his people, either through tests and trials or through the form of a, of a teacher going there and, and showing them the law or however, every, everything that Yahweh does is a form of education to, to point something out to mankind who he's training uh, to become these perfect sons and daughters who will eventually, once we get it, uh, rule as he will rule or govern as he will govern or serve as he will serve. So it says deliverance from the power and effects of sin. Of course, we know the, uh, the effects of sin, or um, as um, uh, Romans says, the wages of sin is death, right? The wages of sin, or you can say the effects of sin, or the effects of working and doing your job, you know, is a paycheck or is a blessing, right? Uh, the effects of diligently tilling the land and, and planting your seed and nurturing the, the land is a crop when it's time to, to harvest it, right? Uh, in every action, there's a reaction or is a cause and an effect that Yahweh shows uh, in the Proverbs, actually. Um, it says the agent or means that affects salvation. The agent or means that affects salvation. Um, and so we know the, the salvation is the deliverance from the power or effects of sin. And the agent or means uh, that affects salvation or that enables you to have deliverance from sin we know comes from the law of Yahweh, the law of Yahweh and the teachings of the law of Yahweh. Now, now, you know, as the great Khan said, you know, Yahshua, you know, his life created a, a, a major turning point in the history of mankind. And, and he had a, a, a huge, a very important integral role in the plan of Yahweh. And as we all know here, and most of even the Christian world knows, and even the Hebrew people uh, don't deny the fact that, that he was a righteous man, he never broke the law of Yahweh, and he lived a righteous life, and he died sinless. And false teachings will teach you that because of that, now you don't have to keep the law. But we know that what did Yahshua's death do? What did it cover? It covered the death penalty. Right? It covered the death penalty because that is the effect of sin. Right? So just because he died doesn't mean that we have free agency to, to go and live in sin. No, we have to do the same thing as he did. All who are as Messiah are obligated to walk as the Messiah. In other words, we have to keep the laws just like he did. And in keeping the laws, that is the agent or means that brings about this deliverance from the power and effects of sin. So I know everybody in this room knows that, and I know that a lot of people who are watching know that, but there may be some who are seeing this for the first time and have never heard in their lives that you actually have to work. There's that four-letter word there, you know? You actually have to work 
in order to receive eternal life, uh, in order to receive salvation. Uh, and what we're training for is in order to receive a part in this priesthood, which is, I don't think, I don't think words alone, men, can, can place in your mind the glory that Yahweh uh, wants to place upon each and every one of us here in this room. You know, words cannot do it justice, right? It's like, it's like when you take a picture of, 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 of beautiful scenery, that three by five picture cannot do justice to what your eyes can see. You know, when we open our eyes and, you know, if we want, you know, blessed and open our eyes and look out at, at a beautiful sunset, sunset or sunrise behind the mountains with, with clouds and the nice green pasture in front of it, you know, we can, we, our peripheral picks up so much in all the different colors, you know, our uh, millions and millions of colors that our eyes picks up, a camera can't do it justice. And our words alone can't do justice to what Yahweh has in store for us. But I guarantee you, you know, it is going to be great. It is going to be magnificent. Kind of like the Malik said when the, as the Abraham asked you, what is your name? Or was it Jacob? You know, said, oh, why do you ask my name? It is magnificent. You know, <laughs> I don't know if that's the actual translation, but it was just kind of funny how that was worded in there. Interesting. All right. So let's look at page 122. Uh, let's um, pick up here. It says here on um, in verse 37, it says, look on down to verse 10 in this. It says, in this, the children of Yahweh and the children of the devil are manifest. That is, uh, they're known. Yes, they're known throughout the earth right now because we worship Yahweh. Uh, we're teaching the laws of Yahweh. We're teaching the ways of salvation, just like the prophecy written about us said. The same prophecies that that said the world would be developing nuclear bombs to destroy themselves, prophesy of a work of Yahweh that says the peaceful solution is going to be taught throughout the whole earth. And that's exactly what it's being done right now. And it's not under any uh, pseudonyms. You know, it is the peaceful solution. Uh, that and as being taught, at, you know, Yahweh's laws, you know, which is the peaceful solution, is being taught throughout the whole world right now. And, and with the increase in technology that we've seen, we saw from that scale there, a uh, very short, short, minute period of time when you consider the whole history of mankind and their existence, uh, it's made possible. I mean, we actually can literally pick up a phone or get on a computer and talk to somebody on the other side of the earth almost instantly. We can hop on a plane and in a matter of, you know, 12 or 16 hours, depending on those, those blasted layovers. But, you know, we can be on the other side of the world. I mean, we can literally be anywhere. We can see or almost do anything in just a matter of hours. Remember, Pastor said it took, you know, uh, was it a couple of weeks or something like that for, for him and his... Um, his uh, family to make it to, uh, actually, I think it was like more of a month, to, to make it all the way from Graham to Lexington, Oklahoma. You know, it takes about four or five hours there in a vehicle. That's it, right? Imagine sitting on a wagon, traveling over bumps, you know, because they didn't have TxDOT out there paving the roads, right? You know, your backside probably gets a little bit worn out. You know, when, you know, when you're going to stop at the next stop, you know, when it, if, it's, if it's hot, you know, they couldn't flip the switch on the saddle and turn the AC on. I mean, if it was hot, it was hot. If it was cold, it was cold. If it rained, you got wet, right? Uh, if it was a muddy rut where you couldn't, I mean, horses do have four legs and they technically do have four-wheel drive. But, you know, it was not like they had the, the traction to pull those, those things really through the, through the mud. Remember, they had a cow and they had some chickens and they had all those children with them, right? You know, so it was a rough way of travel, but that's the way it was for, for almost uh, 6,000 years. Uh, you know, our, 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 our forefathers traveled in the same way. And now we've kind of grown up in, a, in an era of, of being spoiled brats, <laughs> you know, uh, because we have to wait a few minutes for, you know, a phone call to go through. You know, we didn't have, it's not like we had to, 
ring the little thing and ring it again and then operator you know and wait for somebody to take her call and take the plug out and then put the plug in some plate we didn't have to do that and all that stuff's automated you know and we have children who never who don't even know what a rotary dial phone is for heaven's sakes you know they might not have ever ever seen a stamp and <laughs> not alone write a le- actual letter right i mean but this is this is what it was like for 6000 years and then yahweh he just allowed a little bit just a little bit of technology to increase so that it, he can prove to mankind what they would do with that knowledge at the same time allowing his work to expand at a much faster rate in this in these last days but he said here um he talks about the peaceful solution being taught throughout the whole world let's look at uh, verse 41 here he says the house of yahweh is here and the house of yahweh <clears throat> is here established in these last days to teach you a peaceful solution that Yahweh taught in the beginning. It's the only thing that's ever proven to bring, pre- to bring peace, the righteous laws of Yahweh. Uh, he says, you stand up there, you, the Pope, and the Vatican, the divining serpent, and say the laws were done away with. Yes, you did a fine job in doing away with them, and you have brought all kinds of sickness, disease, wars, hatred, um, and confusion as a result. And that's, that's mankind's doing. It wasn't Yahweh's doing. It wasn't Yahshua's doing. It was all mankind who did this. And because they rejected Yahweh, you know, uh, he says, I'll, I'll reject you. You will not be any sons or, or daughters to me. Now, they could. Yahweh leaves the way open through repentance. Now, they might not. They won't have the same opportunity that they had before, right? But Yahweh uh, doesn't desire that any should perish, but that they would turn into in repentance. And Halil could repent, but Yahweh knows she won't. He knows she won't. I remember Pastor saying that uh, concerning her, he said, you know, he still loves her. Now you think about a woman that causes you all that hell and think about the, the uh, you know, what mankind goes through in today's divorce courts. You know, well, I want half. So the guy goes and he starts cutting stuff in half, cuts the sofa in half, cuts the car in half, burns half the house down. (laughs) Well, here's your half, (laughs) you know. You think about the vengeance and the retaliation that mankind has built up in their minds, but Yahweh never had a bit of that in his mind uh, in regards to what Halil did and, and how she deceived her children to follow her in coming against the Yahweh's kingdom and in trying to, to destroy mankind, right? Um, and that's the love, that's the mercy, that's the patience that we have to develop within ourselves. I know the emotions, they, get, they, 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 they pop up on us, and, and we, we, we snap sometimes, and especially if you're out working in this heat, you know, this triple-digit heat, and, and you, know, you, you left your water bottle somewhere, or you pick your water bottle up, and it's hot. You know, nobody likes to drink hot water when it's 100 degrees outside, you know. Um, You know, you stepped on a thorn or something like that, or you hit your knee or your funny bone or something, and somebody keeps it, and and then you snap, right? You know, but you got to bring yourself back. We we have to keep checking ourselves and, and checking our attitudes and checking our mindsets to not allow ourselves or our system to get so out of whack that we justify a hateful or spiteful word or action towards somebody else because of how we felt. You know, we can't make it as a priest in Yahweh's kingdom if we govern based off of emotions. You know, Yahweh's already proven, Yahshua's already proven that, you know, they can do it, you know, and and it's a requirement. We have to keep our emotions in check and, and never allow them to cause us to sin. And that's just, a, just an everyday thing we have to be mindful of. So let's see here. Let's look over to page, um, <clears throat> page 123. Pastor says, um, and, and verse 49, he says, Yachanon 844, you are of your teacher who is Satan the devil. Now he's still speaking to the Pope and these, these, um, these Christian preachers here. He says, if you remember, 1 Yachanon 3, 4 through 15 said the same thing. You are of your teacher who is Satan the devil, and whatever she who is your teacher desires, you will do. 
She was a murderer from the beginning and remained not in the truth because there was no truth in her. Now, this proves she did not remain in the truth. It also shows you at one time she was in the truth, but she did not remain in the truth. Okay, yes, uh, Halil and, and of course the, the third of the Malachim, the, the sons of Yahweh, they weren't always gods. They weren't always wicked and they weren't always demons, <clears throat> you know, or Satan the devil. That was in her name, you know, like a nickname and she started living up to it. No, uh, she was actually, the scriptures in Isaiah talk about, uh, you know, how <clears throat> Duketsky and so forth talk about how she was actually honorable in Yahweh's sight. And if you remember the, the study on, on Halil uh, and, and her name, Halil, before it went to El, um, you know, it actually talked about the, the praise of Yahweh and the laws of Yahweh and so forth. All those definitions are in her name. You know, halal or the holy halakha or the holy law and so forth. You know, so she was uh, held in great honor and high esteem um, in her character and in, and in what she did at for a time. But she didn't remain in it, you see. So it's not enough to, you know, go without stealing or, or snapping at somebody for three months or six months. And then all of a sudden you just have one of those days where you just lost it, right? I mean, great that you did it for three months or six months, but you've got to really work on it, right? Because we don't want to ever get in this position like Hillel was, <clears throat> where she was doing well, and then bitterness, hatred, lust, right? Lust was, was the main thing there uh, uh, for something that she could never have, uh, built up in her, and she did not yield to Yahweh and his plan. She did not believe completely in Yahweh. Look at verse 50 here. It says, so were the gods. The gods, they never remained in the truth. They were taught the truth. Her sons were taught the truth. Yashub shows the sons of Yahweh and who they were. Yahweh said they left their first estate. They ruined the earth before mankind was created and put on the earth. Uh, that shows, that's shown in the first two verses of Genesis. <clears throat> they were the adversaries of Yahweh's plan and, and hoped, they hoped, that they would stop Yahweh from creating mankind. And of course, this is what they did in creating these, these dinosaurs. They were hoping that, all right, so Yahweh wants to put mankind on the earth, uh, flesh and blood beings, okay, we'll get there before them, throw a couple dinosaur eggs down there, hatch them puppies, next thing you know, they're going to eat all of mankind, plan's over, done deal. God's up, one, Yahweh zero. That was their plan. That was their big, bright plan, but it didn't work out. Right? Yahweh's always one step ahead, right? You can't, like uh, Bush said, fool me one, can't, fool me can't get fooled again, right? right? You can't fool Yahweh. You can't get one up on Yahweh. Yahweh's never sleeping um, to where he could be tricked. In verse 51, it says, well, the microorganisms of the earth created a flood that killed all the dinosaurs. Uh, then Yahweh came in, pulled back all the waters and let the land appear. He created mankind and started the process. He actually started a process that's cut up into pieces of a 6,000-year plan. Okay, so as we know, we're beyond that 6,000 years right now. And so we, we see that, that it was cut up into different pieces. <clears throat> and, and, and in everything, you know, especially what we see there in Daniel, it was times of, of actions and certain things had to take place, but it wasn't just... Uh, all one straight shot thing. It was cut up into different pieces, cut up into different phases. Different works took place at different times and he drew out certain people. He proved certain things. And so, you know, this is all contained in this, this book of Yahweh. And, and you, that's why you can't look at any one scripture and say, well, this, this is what Yahweh all inclusively means. No, it's here a little and there a little. Yahweh didn't put it all in one place. Not only that, you've got to have a teacher who he has given understanding to, to break it all down and make it clear for us. He had to prove it to heaven because heaven sees his sons now and what they're doing. They also uh, are experiencing their own leadership. So a lot of them are wanting you right now. Uh, once you receive this power, uh, you'll be able to teach them successfully to have peace hereafter. And of course, you know, that's what we're training for. And again, like I said, I know it might be, it's, it might be kind of hard to perceive these words, um, when you think about when you think about um, the heavenly beings and them, you know, having the same troubles that we have here on earth, 
uh, with the governments being um, the stealing from the people, with the oppression. Uh, what we have here on earth is kind of a mirror image of what's taking place in the heavens, except in the heavens, it's a lot less restrained. You know, there is some restraint put on it, but it's a lot less restrained. And, and when we look at what takes place in the lifetime for us, and we think about certain things like, you know, civil rights movements and things like that and what's and the short period of time in which those things t took place. Well, you got to multiply that by thousands of years for the Malachim, you know, because they've been alive for so much longer than we have. And they live for so much longer than we we do uh, right now anyway. But um, but we're going to fix it. We're gonna, They've got the same problems. The point I'm making is they've got the same. They have the same problems that we have. Right. And the solution to those problems is what we're training for right now. We're not going to go up there and, 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 and perform some strange miracle. <laughs> it's just going to be the simple teaching and application of the laws of Yahweh. In verse 60 on page 124 here, he says, This right here, the prophecies that Jacob gave here, are reaching to the last days, the last 100 years, when we would have an increase in knowledge to prove what mankind would do with righteousness. This is what occurs when you have knowledge without righteousness. And he was talking about the, the, the knowledge being given to mankind. And then they take that and they bring about nuclear wars, nuclear weapons that will bring about nuclear wars. And the many, many wars that came about before then, that's going to lead up to this one hour burning. Knowledge, knowledge without righteousness. And this is what occurs. And uh, Hosea talks about why the people die and um, Proverbs tells us, you know, that we have to seek the, the knowledge, the, the understanding, the wisdom of Yahweh and the understanding of Yahweh. And so the only way you can do that is, as the title shows here, the house of Yahweh only has salvation. So you have to seek the place Yahweh has chosen to establish his name so you can be taught the salvation of Yahweh. And he says, and behold, in my lifetime, they have developed the bomb. In fact, the bomb started in 1934. Let's see how much time we got here. Uh, let's, move, uh, let's move forward a little bit here. Pastor just talks about the, um, a few of the articles with, with China and showing the, the attitude, the mindset of mankind and what, what they're doing with this, this great knowledge that Yahweh allowed. And then again, I say, you know, comparatively to the Malachim, it's still a very small bit of knowledge. It's still a very small bit of power that, that mankind has, although it is, you know, reached leaps and bounds from where we are in 2019 to where it was in 1934, right? But that's where it had the pickup. Um, in verse, uh, let me see here, what do I want to cover? Let's look at verse 71 here. So anyway, Pastor was just talking about, you know, the depopulation and, and what mankind and the being led by the Catholic Church following Jesus, being taught this deception from the, the tree of mixture of righteousness and evil, being evil like the God, what it is leading mankind to right now, what it is leading them to, the wars, the death, the sickness, the disease, the destruction. And this is what Yeshua said in Matthew 24, because of iniquity, because of it abounding, the love of many will grow cold. And it has grown cold, as we see in the articles today. In verse 71 here on page 125, it says, Yahweh shows that with this knowledge, which he is planning to give us, which we receive on the Sabbath days, the feast days, um, at the teaching, when the teaching of the mouth of Yahweh, when the seventh trumpet speaks, we're receiving that knowledge of Yahweh. Um, he's going to prove what it also brings. He's going to prove that to heaven and earth. He's proven it already, what takes place when knowledge is increased. You know, think about that knowledge. Think about the words of Yahweh, like the great Khan mentioned about the, <laughs> he mentioned about the video games, you know. And in some of these video games, you can go and you can, you know, catch a coin or pick up something and bloop, 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 you get a, a few extra points or an extra life or some increase in power and speed or something like that. You know, compare that to receiving the laws of Yahweh, receiving the, the teachings and the instruction of Yahweh, coming here on the Sabbath, making a right choice, being a peacemaker instead of a warmonger. All those things add to your, your life. It adds to your power. It increases your, your, um, your score, if you want to compare it that way. 
You know, it makes you brighter in this world of darkness. Every time you choose righteousness and you practice it, you become that much brighter and that much more honorable to Yahweh. Make it a challenge for yourself. Be better today than you were yesterday. Be better this hour than you were the hour before. Always strive to be the best that you can be in being a righteous servant to your fellow man and showing the face of Yahweh to them. So he says here, he intends to increase your knowledge and righteousness. There's no way you can overfeed the subconscious mind. There's no limit to it. You can just store it and store it and store it. They know this much about the mind, and that's in every head. Every person who has lived, that subconscious mind is there. Even people who are deformed, they say this subconscious mind is in that brain. Every person have it, has it. So he says, don't worry about having a defect in your body. As long as you have that subconscious mind, <clears throat> as long as that subconscious mind is there and stores information, and you prove to Yahweh that you will not lose power against the laws of Yahweh, you will be given that promise of Genesis 1.26. And that's the goal. That's what we should be striving for. That's the, the goal we should be keeping in sight and, um, and, and keep it going with the zeal of Yahweh, uh, you know, and determining to be like Yahweh each and every day and never allowing Satan to, to trip us up to where we have to start all over again. So uh, Yahweh bless your understanding.